The last thing that I want to talk about today is the idea of type on a path, but more than just type on a path because we've already covered that. I want to talk about, about type on a path options or advanced settings that you can modify with type on a path options. And so before we get started, I need you to create something that has a type on a path. You can do something similar to what I have on the screen here, or I'm going to use a circle as my example. But once you have type on a path and you have applied type on a path, you can kind of expand your capabilities of what's happening or what your choices are by going to the type menu, choosing type on a path, and then choosing options. The type on a path options dialog box will launch and then you can click through and kind of see what happens. And so let's jump back to InDesign. I am going to delete everything except for my circle. I'm going to reuse my circle here. I'm going to make it bigger. And then from my experience with InDesign is I apply text wrap to this and you can see there's there's offset on for the text wrap. If I forget and then I leave that on there, down the road I might end up thinking something is wrong and not working right. And so before I do anything I'm going to turn the text wrapping off. Even though we don't have text in the background, I'm going to turn it off so that we don't have problems in the future. And so we can apply uh, type on a path by pressing and holding the type tool and selecting type on a path and then any path can have it applied and so I have a circle that's blue and it has a green stroke on the outside and you can see that I have a path on the inside and that my green stroke is half on the outside of the path and half on the inside and so maybe I want to put like a big happy birthday or something on this and I can click where I want the text to start and type happy birthday Okay, we've done this so far, right? We've gotten to this point. We know how to apply type on a path. But that doesn't always work for what we want. Maybe I don't want the, the green stroke and the happy birthday to overlap. And so we also know ways to fix that right now, right? You can select the, the shape. You can go to the strokes panel and you can tell the, stro the stroke to align to the inside. That might solve the problem. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it we don't like it because it changes the size of the path. Let's go for it for now. But maybe I want the, oh, I didn't spell happy, right? Um, maybe I want the text to be further away from the outside of the circle. Or maybe I want it to be on the inside of the circle. We haven't really talked too much about that. We can grab, with our white mouse, we can grab these little handlebars here. So the bottom one is where the text will stop and the top one is where it starts. And so if you want to, you can move the handlebar over until you center the text the way that you want it to go. Um, but it still doesn't fix it entirely. And so if you're kind of hitting a wall and you're thinking, well, this isn't working how I want it to work, you can try using the type menu, go to type on a path and then options, and you'll open the type on a path dialog box. And this is one of those things where I think just kind of clicking through it will will help you more than me explaining every single thing. And so you can click through, like you can hit flip and see what happens. And when you flip, it puts it on the inside. And that's pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna duplicate this before we make any changes. And so uh, one of the most popular things that I get asked about type on a path is how do I put like happy across the top and birthday across the bottom? Um, the first answer is, I don't know of any way that you can do it with one circle. And so what you would do is you would duplicate your circles. Let's make this 100 points big. Yeah, let's make it 100 points big. And then one, oh, that's only 10 points, that's not 100. Uh, one of these circles will be used for happy. And the other circle will be used for birthday. And so now we can adjust happy. We can grab and move happy and put happy in place. And then in order to get birthday on the bottom, we would have to select it, go to type, type on a path, and then options. And when we flip it, you can see that it put it on the bottom. It's not the way we want it, but it's the right direction. It's facing upright and, and step in the right direction. You can use other things inside here. I'm gonna leave it there for a second and switch to happy. You can use other things inside type, type on a path options to move your text away from the edge of the shape. And so you can align to the baseline, or you can align to the ascender, or you can align to the descender. And what does that mean? And what it means is you have a path, and you are saying, how do you want your letters to interact with the path? And so if you align to the ascender, the tallest ascender in your 
um, in your in your font will align to the baseline. And so like if you had like a letter F, that can't be the, the top one. I'm not going to spend time to figure out which one is the tallest ascender in this um, particular alpha, particular typeface, but it will align the top or the ascender to your path. If you choose to align to the descender, you are saying that you want the descender of your line to align to the outside, and it gives you some breather room along the outside. And maybe this still isn't perfect, but now you could take your path and you could put it back on the outside like you had wanted it before, and now it's working for kind of what you want it. Now the birthday one, I don't want to have happy and birthday have a blue and green circle on the inside. And so what you can do with birthday is you can remove the fill and the stroke color of your shape. You can overlap the two shapes. So I'm going to nudge the circles into position. So let's grab this one. I'm holding shift as I use my arrow keys because it will move the cursor 10 uh, pixels at a time. And now I've aligned them perfectly. So now I can go back and I can use type, type on a path options. And now maybe I'm going to align to the A sender, which pushes birthday out. It's still not perfect because it's not lined up where I want it to be. But now I can come back with my white mouse, grab that little handlebar, and I can push the letters into position. And now I could maybe take it, whoops, maybe take it one step further. Whoops, I need to make sure I have this one selected. I can take it one step further and say, well, maybe those letters were too big to begin with. And maybe you select both of them and you go to your type tool. And then, oh, it won't let me do them both at the same time. I'll have to do one at a time. Um, and you can say, well, what if I just did 80, 80 point type and we'll come up here. Whoops. And then you can kind of tweak it until you get what you want. I'm going to align these so that they're perfectly aligned. And then now I will tweak them so that they line up the way that I want them to line up. Be careful when you do this because I keep grabbing the wrong piece. And that's why when I click and drag, it doesn't look like anything's happening. I want this one. If you keep grabbing the wrong thing, you can always lock it, Command L. And so now when you grab, you shouldn't be able to grab the wrong one. And so now you can create a, a crest or something like that using the type on a path tool. So that wraps up our lecture. And so really quickly, I'm just going to take 30 seconds to remind you of all the things that we covered. It's not a lot. There's only a few things. And so I know I've said this like four times. I just want you to practice on creating artwork with uh, vector art with anchor points and directional lines. And so by the time you're done this lecture, you should understand what vector art is. It's art that's not made from pixels. It's made from mathematical formulas that are embedded in what are called anchor points and directional lines. You can use any artwork that you can create inside of InDesign is automatically vector art, but you can use drawing lines or the lines tool. You can use the pen tool, the pencil tool. You can use the rectangular, the ellipse, or the polygon shape tool. There's lots of different options. You should be able to modify anchor points, whether you move them with the white mouse, the direct selection tool. You delete them with the delete key and you open the path. You use the add and delete anchor point tool or you modify them by making them angular or curved, depending on your needs. And then you should understand the difference between an open path and a closed path, and you should have the ability to close a path if you accidentally left it open. Um, if you have any questions about anything that we've covered this week, make sure that you email me or your instructor, whoever is your actual instructor, um, to ask questions or attend office hours if you need help.